everyone. Um, welcome to the uh, Planning Commission meeting for July 24th. This is the swimsuit optional meeting. So that's why we're all very casual this evening. And I hope everybody else is casual and comfortable today. So we have um, two public hearings on our agenda tonight. Uh, do we have anybody in the audience who is here for public comments that are non-agenda items? And I don't think we do, but we do need to ask. All right, well, seeing none, we will move on to um, item 3A. It is a request for a continuance, planning file CP17002, DP17003, and natural resource review 170004. Trevor, Trevor, are you doing this one? Or you're um, standing in for Pete? I, I you're am Pete standing in for Pete. You're Pete today, yes, okay. And simply requesting to continue this to August 14th. Perfect. Um, that's it. <laughs> okay, that's great. Uh, do you want to say anything or do you need to say anything? Would you like to come up and say anything? We have nothing to say. No, I don't think we do. Thank you. All right, is there a motion to continue, please? To a date, are we doing the date and time certain? Yeah, 14th. Yes. yes. Uh, move we continue item 3A till August 14th. Is there a second? Wow, good. A second. Ooh, you're, you're out of practice. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded that we continue this application uh, on the development on Washington Street, and I just read all the planning files to August 14th. Uh, would you call for the question, please, and uh, the roll? Yes. Um, okay, I'll call roll. Commissioner Guile? Aye. Commissioner Maybe? Aye. Commissioner Espy? Aye. And Chair McGriff? And I say aye, thank you. So the <clears throat> public hearing for the um, hotel will be continued to August 14th, 2017 at 7 o'clock in the Commission Chambers here. Alrighty. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is that it? Are we done? No, we have one more. <laughs> <laughs> Next one's we're just all about done. That. Okay, we're all leaving out the door with Mark and Dan, so that's good. Next one's going to be that fast, right? Yeah. Um, not quite as fast, but close. And they were filling out their slips, so I don't know if they have them. The Deputy Chief Ryan can Ryan hurry, can bring those up, get them. Yes, I do know. All righty, awesome. All right. Okie dokie. All right, we will move on to our second item for the, woo, and the lights go down. <laughs> second item on the agenda. It is a uh, proposal to replace an existing fire station at 19340 Malala Avenue, planning file SP1740, site plan and design review file CU1702, conditional use permit, variance for site layout configuration and building exterior VR1702 and VR1703. And so I will proceed to quickly read through the quasi-judicial land use hearing script because we need to do that. So bear with us. So I just read those file numbers. We have public hearing on this particular application that's scheduled tonight. The staff report has been prepared and has been made available to the public seven days prior to the first public hearing, hopefully the only public hearing. Staff report identifies the approval criteria that applies to each applicant's to each ap each of the applicant's proposals. Staff has analyzed that criteria, which is contained in the staff report. Uh, please help us by addressing your testimony to that criteria. The quasi-judicial hearing procedure that the Planning Commission will follow is set out in state law and the Oregon City Municipal Code. The hearing procedure is shown on the chart to my right. And for the public record, anyone wishing to speak should fill out a speaker's card, which apparently has been done, and given to planning staff before the hearing. Speakers will proceed in the order in which their cards are received, and you may fill out your address on the card so the city may notify you of its final decision. For the public record, please begin all testimony by stating your name. Testimony and evidence should be directed towards the applicable approval criteria. If you believe other criteria apply in addition to those addressed in the staff report, identify and discuss those criteria and explain how and why you believe they apply to the application under consideration. A person may submit any written material while the public record is open on each application. Any written material received by the staff during the time period in which the record is open will be placed in that record. 
Written materials submitted during the public hearing must be presented to staff in order for it to become part of that record. If a person intends to use a PowerPoint presentation, oversized poster boards, reports, pictures, or other exhibits to be used in their oral testimony, to be placed in the record, copies must be submitted to city staff while the record is still open. If they are not given to staff, they cannot be included in the record. Any person wishing a continuance to present additional testimony and evidence or to keep the record open to respond to new evidence must make that request before the public testimony portion of the hearing is closed. If the Planning Commission makes a decision in which you disagree, any issue that you may wish to appeal must have been raised for consideration of the City Commission or the Land Use Board of Appeals or both. Without raising the issue on the record with sufficient specificity and accompanied by statements or evidence that the City and all parties can respond to, the issue will not be deemed ap appealable to the State Land Use Board of Appeals. In addition, the failure of an applicant to raise constitutional or other issues regarding the proposed conditions of approval with sufficient specificity to allow the local government or its designee to respond to the issue precludes an action for damages in circuit court. So with that, we will um, ask for the uh, staff report, please. We have to do our... Oh, yes, that's right. Sorry. So has everyone visited um, the site, or do you have any ex parte contacts to declare? So we'll start with you. Um, I've visited the site on a couple of occasions. Uh, the last time was when there was a large charred RV in the uh, parking lot. Um, but uh, when your command module... <laughs> um, but uh, I am familiar with it, drive by it on a regular basis. Tom? Drive by on a regular basis, other than that, no. I've been by the site as well. <clears throat> I have been by the site and I have been to the site previously before the mold problem was um, uh, in evidence, but um, that's it. And I've had no ex parte contacts with Correct. regard to this particular application. All right. Great. <clears throat> So before you is the presentation for the new Clackamas County Fire Station at 19340 Malala Avenue in Oregon City, Excuse Oregon. Excuse me, it's not Clackamas County. I mean, it's Oregon City, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's know. Clackamas Fire District number one. Oh, sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Not Clackamas County. Not Clackamas County. Yes, yes, County. yes. Okay, yeah. I can, yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's a different, that's a different yeah, fire yeah, district. Yeah. We don't know them. It's getting carried away in the presentation. I'll, I'll fix that. Um, at 19340 Malala Avenue. So a little bit of background on the, the site. So the parcel is at 19340 Malala Avenue. The site, it, currently there is an existing fire station on the site. Um, back in May of 2016, it, it was determined that the fire station was uninhabitable due to a mold issue. On June 1st, 2016, the city commission approved um, a resolution an emergency um, exemption to allow the fire um, CFD number one to look, be located at the Clackamas Community College. And um, right now the site <coughs> is bordered by Malala, Malala Avenue to the west um, com and commercial and industrial development to the northeast and the south. Um, so the proposed project is kind of along the lines of what's existing at this time. Um, it would be for a new 12, approximately 12,000 square foot station that would have an apparatus bay, um, a public and visitor entry and living quarters because this facility would be a 24 hour emergency response uh, building. Um, so some of the existing conditions, uh, as you can see right here, so here's the, the building as it sits on the site right now. Um, parking, some parking space is located in front of the building. The um, majority of the parking is located behind the building uh, with a drive aisle to the north and um, a through bay going out on Tamal Avenue. Um, here it is, a uh, street view picture courtesy of Google. Um, this is the building now today, um, currently uh, uninhabited. So here is the new site plan. So as you can see, it's fairly similar to what is existing, and I have a side-by-side -side in just a moment here. Um, but you can see there is a through apparatus bay. The uh, majority of the living quarters would be on this, this, in this portion of the building right here. There's a drive aisle 
um, to come through and out onto Malala Avenue. A few parking spaces in front and the majority of the parking still in back of the site. And then here is the side by side. I apologize if it's a little bit small. Um, but you can see that the, the two buildings are roughly located in approximately the same location. Um, again, majority of the parking in the back, a through a drive through aisle, a um, little bit of parking up in front, um, mostly with some, the, the, some of the bigger differences with this new site is that they are changing some of the front parking orientation. Uh, they're going to create a new ped area leading into the front entrance of the building and leading onto the public sidewalk. Um, they'll be installing some new landscaping along the north side and within the front here. And the proposed design will increase the trans overall transparency in the, on the front of the building, which I will get to in just a second. So here are the east and west elevations and my monitor just went, okay, it's back. So here are the um, east and west elevations of the building. Uh, this top one would be the, the new front facade of the fire station. So they're kind of, kind of. if you go back here quickly, um, you here see the old one. The new one's going to be updated, new colors, new, new design, uh, clearly stating it's Clackamas Fire District number one on the outside of the building and a nice visitor's entrance right here and, and apparatus bay. Uh, on the back side, the theme kind of carries through with the uh, red and white. And again, windows for transparency and, and living quarters. Here are the north and south facades. So here would be the north facade. This would be adjacent the drive aisle. So, and, and this is the, uh, li most, the primary living quarter side. So this would be kind of the area where the uh, vehicle would be, or the fire apparatus vehicle would be driving past. And here is the um, sorry, maybe the south facade, and there would be I believe there's one um, one living quarter on this side of the building if I can remember correctly, and then this would be housed most of their shop and uh, and some other workstations. <clears throat> and this area would directly abut the. Um, development, other development to the south there, the Lil, I forget what it's called, off the top of my head now. Cooperstown. Yes, yeah, the Cooperstown development. Here is the landscaping plan submitted by the applicant, so uh, the tree, or the tree mitigation plan I should say, so some of the existing uh, trees will be removed, those are marked in the X's here, here, and here, and then here is the landscaping plan where the trees will be replaced. So there are trees to be planted along the north and south side, um, the back here, and then within some of these, uh, I guess, bump outs within the site as well. And then another big item here is on this ped path, there will be additionally installed landscaping to kind of mitigate for some of the variances that the applicant has requested that I'll get into in just a minute. Um, with an overall effect being something like, like this. So within this application, the applicant has also requested two separate variances. The first variance would be for some site design and configure overall configuration. I'm not going to read all of this to you, but the big items here would be the parking in the, in the front and the setbacks to the overall site. So you can tell our code calls for commercial buildings to be a little bit closer to the right of way than this one is. And it doesn't generally allow um, parking in, th in the front of buildings. In this case, um, we found it to be appropriate. Um, one, one reason is because that's kind of what's already there, but other, other reasons being is that the, the changing the parking in the front of the building and also increasing the ped access and increasing landscaping to kind of break up that <clears throat> break up that parking those parking spaces and giving um, 
more space for pedestrian access to the building um, as, as a, a way to make up for that as well as a setback as well um, as well as a setback so having that additional landscaping in front adding that um, adding that pad access way there's also going to be some some seating in this pad access way so people can walking by can have a chance to sit outside take a break from walking uh, whatever they're doing and <clears throat> the other thing would be the, just the um, the the fire vehicle um, man uh, maneuvering the site having the building set back a little bit more gives a fire apparatus vehicle more room to maneuver within the site and when responding to an emergency gives um, anybody who's who's responding uh, a little bit of a little bit more chance to you know get out of the building kind of assess where they're going without <coughs> pulling out straight into traffic right away so those are some of the um, reasons for having the building set back and the parking located where it's at the second variance would be the building design <coughs> so the the applicant is um, requesting um, a variance to the facade articulation on the north side of the building so that would be I have it circled right here um, this area of the building will be abutting the one of the through drive access aisles um, which will be gated off um, so there it'll be low visibility from the public right-of-way uh, the only time that it will actually be visible is either when the gates open or maybe some people who are working at the fire station will have a chance to see it um, as they're driving in and out. Um, and then some other other reasons for doing it this way and not going to the um, maybe the, the maximum of, of what it should be is just creating more space for that fire apparatus vehicle and then also um, underneath this underneath these <coughs> bump outs is kind of where the um, stormwater swale is going to be so maintaining uh, w what they've proposed to, to kind of um, promote those items as well is, is the reason behind that change to the um, facade articulation so overall <coughs> that's um, the application in a nutshell are there any questions for me um, go ahead Damon okay um, are, is there any proposed changes to the existing street trees or are they uh, not I, the street I, trees okay no. that's that's what I was as, as well as the um, curb cut that goes on to Malala there's been no proposed okay. change yeah, to I, it's what I thought I just wanted to think um, what's the square footage of the existing building Com existing building <clears throat> oh I don't know off the top of my head You're supposed to know all this. we can defer to the applicant on that okay yeah. that's fine um, I just wanted to, just basically a, a comparison. There's 12,000, so yeah, it's a deal of eight or is it 15 or. It looks. Didn't you have Yeah, that don't, don't guess. We'll just, we'll just ask the Didn't that, okay. wasn't that in your. It is, but I don't, I don't recall it off. I'm thinking about a hundred other yeah, things and I don't remember that, that number intro, off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> I thought I saw it in the intro. The, uh, can you go forward a couple more to where you have the front. Elevation. Does, no, well, this front. There. Um, does the does their sign meet our code? You mean the the big wall sign? One yeah. six. Um, well, the and Clackamas Fire District one and sixteen. Is it within the square footage of our sign code? The this application for site plan design review does not include a review of signage. They'll have to come in for a separate permit for signs. So it is irrelevant for the site plan design review. You, the wall length sign is you get one square foot for each lineal length of the wall in right. total. So that would include like, you know, the bump outs and all that. Sure, yeah. So that is what the maximum square footage is as far as how what this how that measures up to that be. It's okay. uh, not germane. See, I think as part of site plan and design review, we should be looking at signage. So I don't think it's an irrelevant question. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's part of it's part of site plan and design review. But it's not part of our approval criteria. But the key is when they get ready to put that sign up, they've got to come to you and say it's mm -hmm. 3,500 square feet and we've got 3,600 linear feet so it fits yeah. or whatever the, yeah. the math is. They'll have to that. come in for a sign permit as well as a building permit. Okay. Make sure it's something safe. we need to put in, put back in the code. Yeah. 
Um, it is relevant. I guess that's it. The rest will be for the applicant for me. Tom? I have no questions at this time. Paul? Um, just kind of a random question. How how big are the eave overhangs on this building? I, I got a flash um, of, of one of the elevations, and I was just kind of curious. So it looks like in some areas, mm, approximately four feet or so. Yeah. Okay, and then and then it looks like there's a, a recess where there's no eave overhang over the bays. Uh, Is that right? So are are you? Oh, I'm sorry. So you're talking about? Well, you just had it. This. Well, okay, there's that. That's a big eave overhang, but if you, yeah. and there's. <laughs> That's nice there, yeah, um, but I, I'm, I'm talking about the rear of the building. Uh, the rear of the building. Kind of oh, an so there. it looks like there's a couple of feet. Yeah, so I can tell you here. So it looks, it looks like there's an overhang. Okay. I, I, the, well, okay. a little bit. Yes, yeah, it's, it's probably along the same lines, about yeah. four feet yeah. or so. Isn't that it right? Isn't that yeah. it right there? Yeah. I thought it was but part of the building initially. And I thought, well, oh, wait a minute, that's a measurement. Okay. That's not a building. It's not part of the building. And on the sides, it's probably about two feet or so. Something Paul, why is like that important? I think it's about four on the, um, on the sides and in the rear is kind of what it looks like here. Maintenance, okay. work on the vehicles, shadow from rain. Okay. You know, used throughout four seasons. Yeah, it might be a little off. Yeah. Yeah. It might not be code related, but okay. something that... We can have the applicant discuss it as well. Yeah. Okay. And then also overall yeah. modern oh, design. Looks, We're going to do yeah. modern design. I just had a question a for you about... <laughs> Some of the findings have this statement, which is a, just a little bit awkward. Staff has determined it is possible, likely, and reasonable that the applicant can meet this standard through conditions of approval. And I've noticed that several places throughout here, and it seems to me the one I was that caught my eye was under, let me see, 1762050, there's B and then there's C. So all, it looks like all they need to do is submit documentation because I thought Lango Hansen were registered landscape architects. They've done work for us before. Um, yeah, I think that... Um, and you say it, so I mean, I was just, I think it, you could cut out half of that sentence to yeah. say that, that they can meet this by the condition of approval. That's the only thing I caught was the word possible, by way. Yeah, possible, I'm likely, not, and reasonable. I'm not That's on just weird. whatever page you're on, Denise. I'm on page uh, 15. I saw but that um, it's, that just, it's just an awkward, there, very there, awkward there, sentence. There, right. There are many criteria we have in our code that are prospective that deal with things that we don't yet that the applicant hasn't done yet but we have reason be to believe that the applicant can and so the reason we use that sort of sentence I, I agree with you that that language is a little it's wordy awkward, but awkward. is a little awkward but the language we've been trying to use is that we believe that compliance is reasonable and feasible in other words we don't have the study. Mm -hmm. We don't have the landscape plan yet mm -hmm. because it hasn't been done or because it will be done as part of the subsequent review. And so what we do is we say we have reason to believe that the applicant can do it or we there are no there is no evidence <coughs> to indicate that the applicant can't do it. And so we that is sort of a term of art that reasonable, feasible and likely to be accomplished is a term of art from a Luba case. That mm -hmm. sentence is a little bit rough but that that reasonable feasible and likely to be accomplished is a term of art and i think it applies to this one because they <coughs> submitted landscape plans uh, by lango hansen who we know has landscape architects but there wasn't a stamp from a landscape architect identified on the plan and that's what we need yeah and that's i just say that okay. so my other question for staff is on page 17 number three Obviously, this is not in a historic district, so why didn't we just say that it's not located in a district and that that's not applicable? Because I don't know how they're going to, they can't meet anything if it's not in either of those two districts. You see at the at three at the bottom, their finding complies with condition. And then you say it's determined it's possible, likely, and reasonable that the applicant can meet the standard. I don't see how they can meet that. I'm just wondering if we should just delete that. Um, oh, sure. Yeah, that yeah. might have just been copied over. Well, but yeah. it doesn't. Uh, so number, you're talking about number three? Yeah, because it it's, says it complies. 
Yeah. So number three criteria says building structures shall be complementary to the surrounding yeah. area. All exterior services shall be present in finished appearance. All sides of the building shall include materials and design characteristics consistent with those on the front. The use of inferior design. And then it goes into some yeah, historic districts. So it's and three, not three only B. on historic districts. And there's the condition of approval because there are conditions tied to the exterior design. So it's the, those first couple sentences about how it's complementary to the area. So basically, we are saying if it complies with the code, it is the standard is met. It would be complementary with the area because it does meet the criteria for okay, design. Well, I would suggest a revision then because it's a it's a three parter here. So you've got three, and you've got A and B. A and B are not applicable, <coughs> but you still have a condition that you need to deal with number three where you just read building structures and this does not this finding does not say that it, it to me it just needs to be clear the finding doesn't track with the order or of the criteria yes, yes so if a and b are not applicable then he's saying that not in a historic district blah 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 design will comply so it's kind of like oh, okay it's a two-parter finding to me it, it, again, it was just kind of awkward, and when I read it, I was like, okay, I'm not understanding that. So you need the, the full finding under, like, three, and then A and B being in A. A separate point, yeah. Yeah. Just, just a suggestion. And then the rest of my questions are for the applicants. See, we are reading these. So John and Camille, you guys want to come up? I actually may have a question for Ryan, so, but not at the moment. <laughs> <clears throat> if you don't really have a presentation, that's really okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> Just introduce yourself. Okay, I'm, I'm John McGrew with Hinneberry Eddy Architects, um, project manager for the project. And I'm Kamala Koch with Henneberry Eddy Architects, and I'm the project architect for the project. All right. As far as present, the only thing we would say is that uh, it's been a blast doing this project. I'm an Oregon City Pioneer alum, so uh, being back here is something I, uh, this 30 some years ago, it's been a while, but this has been a lot of fun. Um, and uh, a lot of folks that still live out here have put some, uh, there's a lot of pressure on us to, to do a nice job. And I think the other piece that I would say is that from the, the review and, and working with the city has been great. And basically we don't have any problems with any of the conditions of the report, the staff report. So we're happy to accept all of those, answer any questions. So you went to the original and real Oregon City Hospital. The hospitals. hill, the prison on the hill, yes. Yeah. <laughs> But the prison on the hill? <laughs> That's what we called it. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> here, here in this, so I graduated in 1982. It's just, Ooh, I'm a just up the street yeah. from, from my You're, house okay. in the McLaughlin Conservation District, and we, we love the, the high school. <laughs> I, I do, too. They just filmed a Netflix uh, thing up there. Really? It's going to be on, <coughs> on TV or something. I still have dreams about that high school once in a while. Uh-oh. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about that after yeah. the meeting. Yeah. So I, can I ask a question? Sure. Are you, Are you ready for questions? Sure. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, oh, sorry. Open had, the public yeah, hearing. Yeah, unless you had a presentation, I don't want to. No, they don't. Get out ahead of no. myself. We're but um, yeah, I like the modern design. I think that's really good, and I think that that probably ties in pretty well with what is starting to happen on Malala Avenue design-wise. The um the color scheme is bold, and I was just wondering if you could give me a few words on on how you think that's going to integrate and how that is going to kind of talk to the other buildings sure. on the wall. We, uh, when we came up here, we spent a lot of time talking about it and we, we started looking at the zoning code before we started and, and I think we realized there's some constraints because of what has to happen on the site, but we wanted to make sure that uh, the station that we did uh, had a civic presence, mm -hmm. uh, it has a value to the community. We talked to the uh, fire district quite a bit before we started. Uh, my wife's uh, best friend in high school, his, her dad used to be the chief here. He was up here and, and, and he gave me some feedback about, they used to call this the, the club. It was out in the middle of the farm. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of study looking at the city, starting Oregon City from the falls and moving up the hill and historically what's happened and looking at uh, you know, 
poor Kamala had to listen to me talk about what happened like in 1982. But if you look at the history and the, the kind of work that's come from the mills, which were the metal kind of clad buildings and what uh, hopefully are going to be reinvigorated, and you move your way up and, and uh, look at what's happened on the hilltop. I mean, when I was in high school, there was no McDonald's. There was barely there was no hilltop. hilltop. There was no <laughs> right. hilltop. Yeah, so you can, see, you can see that transition coming up through. So we talked a lot about that the intent of this fire station was that um, it had to do a little bit like the station down on Singer Hill, that it has to fit now, but it also has to fit 100 years from now. Yeah. Um, and, and well, hopefully 100, but at least 50. Because yeah, as a follow-up, I, I want to know how this building would also communicate with the building that's on, on South End Road that we just got done with. I'm sorry? The, 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 yeah, the, well, see, but that the, one's surrounded by residential area. Right, right. And but this I one think, is not. I think that, I get that, but I think that there should be, uh, you know, there are civic buildings, there are fire stations, and I think that there should be kind of a theme that connects them a little bit. I'll tell you, so in terms of the fire station, we did a survey of uh, the firefighters especially and some other folks about what makes a building look like a fire station. We did that before we designed this building. Uh, we reinforced and asked that question at the Good Morning Oregon City meeting we went to here in the community. And the answers we got, top three, without hesitation, were um, being able to see fire trucks, mm -hmm. red, and a flagpole. So. We took that pretty literally. And I think if you look at the, we, and we did want it to be bold. I mean, one of the other things, it's different when you're five feet off the street and we, we mm -hmm. advocate and understand and get why, but we can't to make this fire station work. So but we wanted this to have a presence within the community and be clear what it <coughs> was compared to the other buildings. Okay. Yeah, I guess I had a question about that too. And I, again, you know, each of the stations are in different areas. Obviously this would not work in the McLaughlin Conservation District. Right nor would it work on the south end area because again it's it's a different um, area but i that it kind of reminded me of um, i don't know if you've been through gladstone lately but their fire department is downtown on their main street and it's it's got bright bright red but it's a little awkward <laughs> in terms of its design and how it fits in with everything else around it and unfortunately that's the first thing where my mind when i thought okay well it's not like that but um yeah, I mean, I think the the red as a as an accent is is good, and the and the bays are set back, so it's not like you're going to drive by and go, oh, you know, it's really, you know, really red. Um, what uh, seismic standard is this going to be at? The highest. So it's a, a couple of things. So it's an essential so it's, facility. Go ahead. It's an essential facility under the Oregon Structural Specialty Code 2014. I'm wondering if he's, then, he can hear you. Yeah, you might need to speak Might up need to scoot up just a little bit. Um, and the mic's so on, isn't it? So it's an essential facility. It's designed for an essential facility under the Structural Specialty Code 2014. And are you looking for a specific zone? Well, or? just is it up for an 8.0, a 9.6, a 42.1? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I'd have to ask. Well, no, I, I, oh, and, and briefly, you do need to identify yourself. She did. Uh, she did. Yeah. I did. Yes, she yes did. they both introduced themselves okay. when I they called them up. That. Yes. So, tip, um, so the fact that it's an essential facility, and the, I'd have to have the structural engineer here to explain to you exactly what's going on. And the story I've heard every time I ask them is they won't be able to tell you specifically the what the magnitude is that it's intended to handle. What I do know is, like Kamala said, we've, we, based on the calculations, we're actually in for building permit now, based on the calculations that we've submitted, uh, we're, we believe, and, and hopefully the calculations will prove out that we're compliant with the requirements for the building code for an essential facility. I'll also tell you it's a wood frame building, which is typically one of the most resilient types of structure. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, the flexing rather than exploding exactly. bricks Correct. everywhere. Exactly. Yes. So, okay, and so it's 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 being built to the, the the highest code that we currently have, which should hopefully make it being one of the buildings standing when everything else goes. Yes, yes. exactly. Um, and I don't know whether this is a question for you or a question for the chief. And I know it's a little bit out of the boundaries, but it's still a. a um, since this is an essential facility, and potentially if <laughs> it hits the fan, might be one of the few places where people can go for services like food and water and shelter, um, is it, is, I couldn't tell if there was like 
storage for like emergency rations or and I know it's this one's more for the chief is eight people enough if all the firemen have to be there because they're not going to be able to be at home they're going to be dealing with stuff so I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll wait until everybody okay, else is yeah. done. But then, but um, that—that's my concern. Is—is is will this be a you know? I can answer a piece of that. I think, and the chief can correct me if I'm wrong when he comes up. Um, in the conversations we had, especially with the, in relation to this particular station on the hilltop, uh, the assumption was in the the you know assume the Cascadia subduction right. event or something like that. That in reality. Um, rather than them being at the station serving people who come there for aid, they're likely to all be Out. on calls. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the, we have not, I can tell you there's not a massive uh, um, cupboard or storage for food or services or anything like that that was not included in the program. And now I'll let the, the chief respond to their expectations or how they see things moving forward in that type of, of event, but there is no we don't have an extra pantry or, or anything like that included in the space. Okay, because that's been my experience with other natural disasters, hurricanes and a couple of floods and typhoons, is ex-military, that's why. <laughs> it's like, things aren't that crazy here. Um, but uh, is that those public facilities become the rallying point for people mm -hmm. for you know, finding loved ones, finding you know food, water, until they can figure it all out. So I just didn't know if that was part of your philosophy in the building of you know we're going to have a few extra areas where you know MREs are stored or you know we've got a large water buffalo that we'll be using or whatever the case may be Ooh, and that's a go. thing to store water in, not the thing I understand I know it's not the right. animal <laughs> okay so uh, right. that's fine if that okay. wasn't well, part of your <coughs> thinking process yeah, nice. we're all laughing well again I, the chief can probably answer yeah. better about how they how they intend to respond, but in terms of space in the building, we didn't have anything programmed. Building's flexible; lots sure. of things can happen. Yeah. Base, you pull the trucks I mean, out. You the pull the trucks out. Huge right. storage area. Right. A so massive right. sized yeah. open vaulted space for yeah. people and storage. So yes, okay. right. there's you. potential and opportunity for that. So I'm curious as to where the wood panel soffit veneer is. Is this underneath here, where this brown is that I can see on the? Yes. Exactly, okay. and actually, in in the final version, it's actually painted, but it is it's a plywood oh, okay. soffit underneath. Basically, everywhere where you were asking about the overhangs, that's a plywood okay. soffit. And then I'm assuming that the um, you talk a lot about in here about the anodized metal, and I'm presuming that's a matte finish or something it's, that yeah. that's it's, just that kind of that it, it's just one of those weird things. So Oregon is gray except for this summer, and so if we have a building that's gray. We got gray skies and gray everything. It's kind of like, oh. So we, that's why we actually uh, went through uh, some real life mock-ups with the chief and, the, and uh, Chief Charlton to convince them that we liked a lighter gray than the darker gray. Than the darker gray. For that exact purpose, that we have a lot of gray days where, um, it's where gray. light is good, but we also didn't want it to be so white that when we do yeah, have the days yeah. like we do this summer that you're blinded off the street. So right. while it looks like a white in our um, pictures and renderings, I think the intent is without, it's not white, white, but you would, if you were to drive by on a cloudy day, you'd say it was a white building. Okay. If you went by on a sunny day, you'd probably still say it's a white building, but it's not white. It's, if you go look, it's gray. It's just, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. Pick, the pick, current pick your color. Yeah. Could you Actually, go to the um, the landscaping where it shows before, the pedestrian? Before you move, can I ask oh, a yes, question? Yes. The gray, I'm not sure what to call them on the top of the building. Are those skylights or are those vents? Those are actually um, prefabricated metal rib panel. Well, they're they, well. The roof is prefabricated metal roof. The pieces on the top Eight are actually what we call a light monitor. So it's not a skylight because the roof is not. I mean, the glass is not open to the sky. So it's a roof, and then the north face is a is a window, so that we get natural light into the so you are apparatus bay. Light. There are some vents there to allow natural ventilation to keep in the summer to cool the bay that they open up, and then the last piece is those are actually placed. Uh, to uh, support the PV panels that are, are going to be installed what on panels? top of that. Photovoltaic PV. Yeah, okay. Solar panels, and so the roofs slope to the south, and we're mounting the solar panels so on the So it's going to be solar, okay. It is. Nice. 
Okay, so go ahead and change it to what you wanted. Okay, I had a, a question about the um, pedestrian area. So, you, well, maybe not this one because I think the green one, because I think what I was trying to get, I think, well, maybe actually they both apply. Okay, so it looks like on the previous plan where it says pedestrian plaza, there's a tree in there. Mm -hmm. It's not on this one, and that was the one I saw. So I think on the landscape plan that you just showed, it did show a tree. Because I was going to say, man, that is going to get pretty hot out there. Yeah, there's a tree. There's trees. And without, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to make a leap of faith and try to say this as delicately as I can. So I'm assuming this is going to be a temporary sort of resting area, and it's not going to become reverse income housing in any, of any sort. <laughs> so you have the same goals as the district. And the way that we, what we've tried to accomplish there is the... Um, uh, that little that whole strip the the pedestrian area mm -hmm. one we're also trying to emphasize the public it's a public building an right. institutional building so we want to make an entrance that's more apparent than right now you basically have to walk across the parking lot to mm -hmm. get to the mm -hmm. building so that's the overall intent within that what we we've, we've done and one of the pieces where the variance came is because where the gates at we we also don't want to have the public back where Absolutely. the firefighters uh, rigs and things right through the day so we needed the we put the few public parking spaces up front we tried to rotate them around and <coughs> if you look at if you looked at the details they're actually in the same plane as the walk with stops so that yeah. when cars aren't there which if every time i've been by uh the existing station 16 the only time their car was there was mine um so the idea is that when there aren't public cars there it doesn't really look like parking right. and, and so we're trying to conceal that the the we know that part of that site variance was having the trucks drive across that sure. walk and you know again we're lost but what we think that does for an advantage for us is we really uh, the intent the seating pieces that trevor mentioned are all west of that drive mm -hmm. and so the intent basically is that the places where people stop for respite and where it becomes kind of a pedestrian amenity are all west of the drive and and that you'd really have to make a concerted effort or be there for a reason to be east mm -hmm. of that drive. Well, I, I use um, the FedEx Kinko's is just beyond this, and there are, believe it or not, quite a few people that walk that. I mean, it's kind of on the way to the post office, sure. so there's some of that going on. Um, I know that right now there is a, so I'm talking about, not that you need to know, but page 57 where we're talking about uh, reader board. I know there's a sign there now, so there, is that just gonna be revamped? Mm -hmm. currently the way it is or is this going to be electronic well, a, or what do we what do you think it's so going basically to be? what we're showing is a new uh, there's a new concrete base okay. and that a reader board sits on top of not not unlike i don't know like the reader board out at the high school on beaver creek right so it's basically its intent is that it's just digital letters for them to put information okay right. and then it has a 16 and, and i we, honestly don't go out that I don't drive oh. Beaver Creek very much okay. anymore because it's like always crazy. So I, yeah. I'm not familiar with the one. It's just it basically, or any other, it's, it's essentially a digital readout yeah. that is intended to be text. Text. Okay. Uh, we're not, we're exactly. not doing graphics, graphics or, or anything. images yeah, or anything so like that. Neighborhood meeting tonight at seven. Exactly. Or, yeah. Or be go, sure go not to, to the do not, do not burn today because yeah. there's a no Move. burn ban. Right. Now. Exactly. We do have, yeah. we do not exactly. allow burning in Oregon city. Yes. Yeah. I, I really like the public spaces and I think that that adds to the vibrancy mm -hmm. and contributes to the pedestrian experience for people that are walking up mm -hmm. and down the street. Mm -hmm. Because there's really no place to stop. Right, and and I'm I'm seeing the little benches there. I'm I don't know what those really are. If those are just little stumps or if they're cement squares yep. or just they're exactly. precast. Yeah, yeah, they're cast in place concrete, and uh -huh. they'll be painted red. So they're so smooth, they, and yeah. they're just little cubes so that are essentially yeah. sort of sculptural at the same time as providing seating. I would hope to see um, maybe a mass planting of at least three trees there that are in to the that are to the south of those trees, those benches, so that they get a little shade in the summertime. Yeah, there's one tree, but that may not be. So there's long. that tree on that edge, and then we have not added trees to the west edge, uh, primarily because of concerns from the firefighters yeah, and their their sight the lines coming out on out Malala yeah, Avenue. Exactly, yeah. and even the current street well, tree that. that is up there. <laughs> is causing some <laughs> mm -hmm. visibility mm -hmm. issues yeah. with mm -hmm. them getting out of the site. I mean, so if it's, if it's in any way possible, I mean, maybe some of a smaller species yes. or something that could be done there to actually have a genuine experience there so that people can't sit there and it'll be 
shady during the summertime. I mean, of course, mm -hmm. you know, or at least our, night, it's only not 900 month degrees yeah, because yeah. it's been in the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Our hope the tree that you see the one tree that's there, mm -hmm. and when it gets when it's mature, it's a pretty good sized tree. Yeah, and the same with the street tree that is there. So right. in the west, mm -hmm. you know, when we do get the sun sitting on the west, and we're, what species we're hoping, are those? Uh, Let me double check. I can look it up. You want the so Latin while, name? while she's looking that up, <laughs> sure. I'm assuming you are going to put uh, skateboard stops on them because that's another, that's another lovely spot where right. I saw somebody leaping off the uh, state our station, the main so, state. We consider it the main station right. in McLaughlin, leaping off the front steps, and I was like, ah, because I know they just repaired that. Well, that's a good question. I, I think that the pieces that we have are not long benches; they're shorter. Uh, and we've actually scored the concrete on the piece, so it's less attractive for, for skateboarding. For skateboarding, um, but we could look. I, so I don't believe that we have the skateboards because the other part about putting the skateboard stops on those little cubes is then it's not as comfortable to sit on either. So we're or trying sleep to, on right. or yeah, or sleep right. on. Those are good trees. I don't think any of ours. Yeah. They're all cubes. I don't know that they're actually big enough that you could lay down on the cube. So the Princeton Century Ginkgo mm -hmm. is what we're proposing. That's a My native favorite. native tree to, to our Favorite. beautiful state. Yeah. Okay. I think they'll look really nice. The, the, the overall landscape, we've worked really hard to do a couple of things. One, the firefighters don't want to spend a lot of time out maintaining. Raking. The, yeah. the, so uh, we are with Lango Hansen, the intent is that these are all as much as possible native, native um, um, drought tolerant, low maintenance types of plants and the idea is that there's very I don't think there is any lawn Just make sure the ginkgos are male yeah. okay okay yeah, I'm sorry I need to go to the difference I hate to ask how you know the difference <laughs> you can, you can have a cult of, cult, um, yeah. I, I did have a um, suggestion at least on the perimeter uh, would there be any objection to changing the caliper of the tree from two to three so that they get a little bit faster growth and you get a little more screening there on that side I mean two is kind of could you clarify where on the, you are on, the the on the exterior the boundary the on the exteriors these guys so two rather it's hard to find yeah well, they, we would be open to I I, I, I found them mm -hmm. I have found them I've looked you know so anyway yeah. um, Okay, well that's uh, two inch versus three inch. Yeah, or two and a half to three. Sure. It's always right now we have it as three inch in our current in our construction, construction document. document. Okay. So this okay. that one may be a little bit outdated. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Anything else, gentlemen? I have a question out of naivety, and I'm sure I'll be asked by other people. Um, I've never asked a fire station. The big on the the current elevation, the big tall column in the middle that that's not on this current one what what was that for and there's no need for it anymore Correct. it was for drying hoses so the the material that the hoses used to be made out of once they were used you had to come back and hang them to dry otherwise they would rot and fall Didn't apart yes, and, and the new material that the hoses are made out of doesn't have that same rot issue i always thought they were because i've seen them on pal on about 17th and i always thought yeah. it's for exercise to get the guys to run up and back down you, all the time. you have no idea how bummed i was to find out that they didn't need them anymore i wanted, to put, I wanted a tower on the building warrior, so. Right. Yeah, so okay thanks right. it was just yeah. I'd... and some of those towers are for that training are they okay? and that yeah. was yeah. another piece yeah. of this program but it didn't fit on the site so so i I actually do have a fire equipment question and that's only because it came up at um, the main station ie station 15 because we have a historic building and this is not so I know that the fire equipment is changing in terms of its size and one of the questions I got asked sort of off the record was the height of the doors so I'm assuming the height of these doors is a little bit taller in case new equipment comes out that will accommodate the ladder and the bigger you know, the, it's not so much the, the, the equipment is wide, it's taller yeah. <laughs> with all the stuff they have on it. Correct. Um, so right now the front doors are at 14 feet mm -hmm. tall um, and the back doors are at 12 feet. Mm -hmm. And their apparatus is less than 12 feet, probably 10 feet. I don't know. You could give me the full height. The station's also designed around, one of the reasons why this, uh, and I can't give you the exact square footage of the previous building, but this is a much larger building. Larger building. It's two companies instead of one company. Mm -hmm. uh, it's and the apparatus bay. While the front edge of the apparatus bay is in the exact same location mm -hmm. as the mm -hmm. um, original, the bay is much deeper because this this building is intended to accommodate a ladder truck. Yeah, which will be the biggest piece of yeah, equipment. That's kind of uh, what I was thinking. Sixty-two foot long truck. Yeah. Right. 
And that was the thing that pushed the building back, just getting that rig out before you hit the street. You need that clearance, mm-hmm. and then to be able to make the turn. turn yeah. So, right. yeah, not quite that's as easy landed. to drive. Even though you know, on Seinfeld, it looked pretty easy when Kramer's <laughs> on the back on the ladder, right. Right. Yeah. driving around. Right. Oh. Okay. Any other questions? No, okay. Well, thank you. You have ones for uh, Chief Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Up. Ryan Hurry. So you just have to say your name for the record. Ryan Hari, Deputy Chief, Clackamas Fire District. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks. Um, well, actually, they kind of brought up one of the I was concerned about the street trees and your visibility. Um, it's the same issue I had when we were doing the bus barn. It's You guys are up much higher, mm-hmm. and so that nice little tree planting is in your face. So um, the current street trees, you're able to do the work around it isn't, I mean, or do you need to get rid of one of them, remove it, or, I mean? We, we haven't been uh, told by any of the crews that work there that's an issue. Okay. I personally haven't worked at that station, so I, I can't tell you exactly, okay. but they're busy enough that I can tell you this, if it was an issue, we would have heard about it. So, okay. and during this whole process, anything that they felt we could improve upon was relayed and that was not an issue. Okay, good, because it's, I mean, I know you got the light and everybody's supposed to stop, but we all know, <laughs> and, 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 Boy, I'd, I'd just hate to like some bicyclist or whatever just because the trees in your face and they're not paying attention. So, um, okay, so there's that. Um, just roughly, what's the increased square footage? I, I don't expect numbers, but it's like it's 2,000 square feet more. It's a whatever. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I didn't bring the, the old documents, but I'm going to say it's it's nearly double. Oh, great. In, in square footage, uh, mainly because the apparatus bays are significantly wider, but also the living quarters have been increased in size for up to eight people yeah so you don't have triple bunks anymore correct <laughs> correct um and then that gets to my the other thing which is off topic but still of concern is what what is the vision for the facility if there's a major event uh you know uh, heaven forbid a tornado or you know uh, an earthquake or whatever and because um, like i said oh, my experience has been major public facilities, police and fire stations are where people go. People so so the, the vision for that has kind of evolved a little bit over time. So, and really uh, we saw a little bit of a shift post uh, 9-11. So uh, kind of the idea prior to that is that you're right, uh, it would be a rallying point. And what we started to figure out is in the event of a major, um, say an earthquake or a, some big issue, the firefighters aren't going to be there. They're going to be out and the facility has to be secured and available for them to get back. So you'll notice um, if, you know, through like the CERT groups and some of our public outreach, we talk about people having a 72 hour kit to be able to take care of themselves for that first three days. And kind of part of that is the idea that not everybody would come rush the fire station or the police station because the, you know, everyone's gonna be out and about trying to figure out, you know, where, where to send resources and, and how to mitigate the problem. So that would give time for then if, if we wanted to set up a rallying point or something, we could bring extra staff in. So the, kind of the, the, the vision for that is, has been scaled back a little bit. So it's not built to immediately house an, in, you know, an inrush of people. And it's more built to support the people that are working there. And then later, you know, people, it could be set up later uh, during an event with extra staffing. Yeah, and, and I wasn't envisioning it being housing. It's just more like... I'm going to go there because I ran out of water right. or, I mean, because if even 1% of the people in the city don't do their kit, that's 350 people. Yes. Um, so um, that that was just my thought. And and whether or not there's enough room in the bunk room for like your, you know, I assume everybody's going to be called in um, and, and I'm not thinking <laughs> so people are going to be out and then there'd still be the called in. So there'd mm-hmm. still be, you know, It'd be hot bunking or whatever it is, but um, I, that was just, is there an ability, well, I assume you just start dropping them in parking spots, but um, for like a, a survival pod, like if the National Guard drop comes in and drops like a, you know, five pallets of whatever, um, then you, there is the ability to do that. At the oh, absolutely, yeah. and, and I think all of our facilities, you know, would be accepting of something like that. Yeah. So it's just not built into the building, but certainly we could receive something and, and handle that. Okay. Um, then that's it. I, yeah, the building itself, yeah. I think, is going to be a, I mean, it's it's kind of an industrial building in an industrial area, but it's 
classing up, mm -hmm. you know, everything. And uh, I sure as heck want your guys to be able to be safe and, and, and go to sleep and go, I'm not going to wake up with the flu in the morning because of mold or an Absolutely. electric fire or whatever. <laughs> We've had both. Yes. Yeah, yeah I'm looking at the, the, the proposed picture of the cubes. That's enough to skateboard on. Yeah. Um, Having been a former skateboarder myself, I <laughs> well, if, if, we didn't jump on things back in the day. So, but if they're if they yeah. score them, then that'll yeah. that'll be it. Yeah. And then the other, yeah. I guess the other thing I would say about those little seats is make sure there's a little concavity or convexity, uh, so that it does well, and uh, so it doesn't create a puddle, because um, then those people just stop using them. The brain goes away, but there's oh, goop right. there, so they oh, don't. Oh, you mean like in the groove part? Well, so that it isn't a bowl. Oh, you know, yeah. some I, I've been to some parks where they do it, and, and they put the little bowl so your butt fits in it better. But then it it's turns wet. into a junk spot, you know. Yeah. So, um, but I, I love the fact that uh, that you're uh, investing so wisely in the city. Um, I know you need a station. You could just put up a block, you know, square brick block and, and get away with it. But, uh, but, uh, thank you for, uh, for being part of the community. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I think a couple of things I was going to mention is that when you, when, uh, John mentioned that, uh, the fact that he'd grown up here, that was when, it, when the city limits ended at Tri-City Bowl, that yes. was, that was in the county. So there may have been a county conditional use permit. I don't know whether you guys checked or not, but it just came, something just came into my brain and then the other thing I was going to mention is that the um, uh, city has uh, one of the groups has ordered some bicycle racks that are kind of in the shape of um, the, the arch bridge and maybe you guys could find out about who has those and maybe get some of those for the bike racks because that would be kind of cool and I'd, I'd have to yeah. make sure it was okay with our architect, but certainly we'd look at that. So. I think he's, he's, he's smiling. He's smiling. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to promise anything he might shoot down. So I, I don't, he's, he's smiling, so that's, that's, <laughs> right. a, good, that's a good thing. Real quick, from my reading of the, of the material in the staff report, you guys are asking for the <laughs> material and design variances to increase the functionality of the fire station itself right. and not necessarily value engineering or, or reducing right. costs or anything. No. I wasn't really clear on that. I just wanted to make sure that, that the, the variances that we're asking for are, you know, that that's the right. Correct. Yeah. Okay, that's it. So, okay, we're we're good. Right. Thank Is you. Is there anybody in the public who would like to make some public testimony or comments tonight before we oh. get on with it? Nope. You no, no comments. All on the design team. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. I was just. Oh okay. All right. You like it? Okay. All right. So being that there is no member of the public here, I'm going to go ahead and um, close the public hearing and allow for Planning Commission deliberation. Gentlemen? I really don't have anything to add. I, I like that you mentioned the three inch because um, I hate the twigs that show up and then they break or Somebody they're breaks not them hardy up. enough yeah. or whatever. So that's so. the only yeah, if they I, have have, three I don't, inches on I don't have any issues with any of the conditions. Um, I think it's all the variances are logical. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, of, of course you need to drive over the pedestrian pathway, or you're never going to get the vehicles, you know, back in. And uh, I've been in some cities where literally they stop in the street and they back into the into the building, and um, it's that you know. So you you got to do the loop. I mean, that's just basic necessity so yeah. um, I think it's all all well within uh, their requirements Tom um, I think Damon covered it everything I need to carry on okay but he just said something that made me wonder <clears throat> because those are such large trucks to the did the cement walkway where the, the, where the pedestrian stops does that have to be reinforced for all the heavy trucks probably something different on yeah. is your oh, mic on sorry. Turn it off so I can say bad things. No, <laughs> no. My question was Damon said everything, and I and I think everyone here has covered it. My only question was I was thinking as he was talking about the the trucks is the, does the sidewalk have to be reinforced for people walking across there because those trucks are so heavy and it's it, I figured as much. Just a thought that came up when he said that. Okay, Paul, I'm ready for a motion if yep. everybody's done. No, I, okay. I'm waiting for my turn. All right, it's your turn. I'm letting you know that I'm ready. Okay, and I'm ready. All right, well, I um, uh, generally I 
really scrut well, I did scrutinize anyway, I scrutinized variances because variances are basically the exception. This is not a commercial building. This is an emergency services building that happens to be in a commercial area. And I think that this is what the variance criteria was designed for. I think that everything that they're requesting is reasonable. I don't expect this building to be up to the street. I don't expect it to have a whole ton of windows. It's not that type of a building. This is an exception, and that's what the variance is for. It's an exception. I think that they meet all the criteria. I made a couple of comments about fixing one of them, but um, I think that this is uh, appropriate. And I think that they've made um, a lot of good suggestions and proposals for this particular facility. Obviously, it's needed very much in this portion of the city. I feel very lucky that we have our own station in my neighborhood. And I think the other neighborhood down there needs to have their fire station back in operation and running. So if you're ready for a motion, we can go there. I move that we approve SP 17. 40, CU 1702, BR 1702, and BR 1703. I second. Okay. okay. We have a motion and we have a second. Uh, One wait, wait. Uh, yes. I was looking through the conditions real quick. Yes. Condition 9B has paper bark maples will be planted a minimum of two inches in caliper. Did we, was that the three you were talking about? Well, that and the trees on the uh, south elevation and there's a few on the north elevation they said okay. that in their specs they already have three inches so okay. that can be changed to three but inches to no match it says a minimum so that's yeah, fine so match their specs I and i just I'm, wanted to make sure it was i'm good with that okay so, so your motion is to keep the staff report as is yes. or amend the yes. conditions okay yeah all right okay. are you ready for me to re go re-roll <clears throat> commissioner guile aye commissioner maybe aye Commissioner Espy, aye. And Chair McGriff, aye. Uh, motion passes for zero. So I, I should have you note that I had uh, a birthday party at the station 15 just a few, a few years ago, not too many years ago, but I had my birthday party there. I got to slide down the pole, which was really awesome. <laughs> I'm glad that's off the record. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Laura, do we have any uh, communications? I actually got to drive a Quinn. You, thank you very oh. much. Um, so I just wanted to announce our greenway for a day for the trail. Um, it's a part of the Oregon City Loop Trail, and so which is a regional trail. Um, we are working on a design from the promenade to the Children's Park in Kanima, and uh, in order to identify an optimum location for this pathway and the design for it we're going to pretend like it's there and call it a greenway for a day and we're going to close off um, some locations and see what it feels like and get some suggestions about what that design should be so it's uh, this Saturday which is July 29th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. there's also going to be an ivy pole um, that morning uh, around this location as well I have cards to pass out you can always go to www.orcity.org to find out more yes, and I apologize I have a board meeting from 10 to noon on that day so I will not be there <sighs> Saturday meetings oh. well we switched it so we could be at the first city festival last week and frying oh. on the sidewalk well, we are too busy with too many events yes <laughs> um, and then the other last announcement is that we have um, got into contract with Kogan's Owen Green as a consultant to help us with our equitable housing project. So you'll start to see us form groups and committees to identify housing opportunities within the city and identify ways to provide more housing, look at our processes for housing and fees and things like that and see if there are ways that we could reduce barriers and increase incentives for additional housing opportunities at all ranges. And I think we all want to be very involved in that. Yeah, so there'll be, um, we'll let you know more as it unfolds, uh, but it was just approved by the City Commission last week. So over the next year, we hope to have a legislative amendment before you to amend the code in some form. At the very minimum, to be a little more reader friendly. Okay. That's it. Okay. All right, any other communications? Anything else anybody want to say? All right. Meeting is adjourned. Is this your